the webinar is now broadcasting to all attendees. That's it. That's what I see too. All right, great. So we'll give uh, people a, a minute to file in, grab their popcorn and oh, their yeah, software. I, I see the I see the participants um, coming in here too. Welcome everyone. Yes. Okay. Hi guys. I see them as well. All right, welcome everybody. Filing in, I love it. All right, this is- Awesome, uh, wow. All right, so for all of those uh, that are just joining us and, and joining the webinar, this is a, a webinar, not like last week where we actually had a meeting, a Zoom meeting. This is what's called a Zoom webinar chat. And uh, we're excited that you're here as well. This is weird. This is like a, it's like romper room. You can see us, but we can't see you. <laughs> I, you know, hi, Anne Marie Price. Yes. <laughs> hi, Ben Bailing Shaw. Let's see who else do we have here. Dina Robinson, uh, Elizabeth Himshack. Uh, hello, welcome, Kristen Castillo, Lynn Walker, Maggie Espinoza, Mark Friedman. Nicole Vargas, Thomas Bedford, Wendy Patrick are among some of the attendees today. So thank you for joining us. Yes, uh, I need my, uh, I think she used a, a mirror in Romper Room, if I remember correctly. <laughs> <laughs> she did. <laughs> right, just a little flashback there, uh, a Thursday throwback. Uh, yep. All right. <laughs> all right. Well, before we get to some introductions, uh, I'd like to take care of some housekeeping. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Ad Zing to your Zoom webinar presented by the San Diego Press Club. Uh, we want to acknowledge the SDPC board members at the event tonight Carol Carmageni, Kristen Castillo, Cynthia Dial, Chris Etlin, Maggie Espinoza, Gail Falkenthal. Albert Fulcher, Eileen Gaffin, Rick Griffin, Barbara Metz, and Denise Scatina. So thank you for that. I am Luis Cruz. I'm the Community and Public Relations Director at the San Diego Union Tribune, and I will be your moderator for this evening's presentation. All right, let's, let's move on to the next slide. All right, some uh, nuts and bolts housekeeping items. We want you to know that we are recording this session and it would be posted online at a later date on, the, uh, on our website, San Diego Press Club, sdpressclub.org. So you'll wanna look for that. And you see the chat feature already. Many of you are already using it. So ask questions in the chat room and we are monitoring that and we will get to as many questions as possible. Uh, let's see, uh, a couple of housekeeping items. Terry has sent out membership renewals in the uh, mail, so be on the lookout for those. If you're not a member of the San Diego Press Club, we encourage you to become one. Visit our website for more information, sdpressclub.org. Also, our annual awards contest opens July 1st and goes through August 17th, so we can't wait to see all your great work. And one more thing, it's your last chance to take our chapter survey we want to see what is going on with you, and uh, we are taking ideas for upcoming programming. So visit the San Diego Press Club website to participate, and we'll also put links here in the chat stream as well. All right, so uh, we want to get started. Uh, we're going to be using the word Zoom a lot, but we want to remind you some that most of these tips are really referencing all forms of video conferencing. So. Before we uh, give you some of these great tips and introduce you to our panelists, I do want to uh, share with you a short little video um, that sort of, I think, shows you maybe all the, all the ups and downs we've experienced with Zoom over the last couple of months. Take a, take a look. Uh, yeah, so we're just going to get an update on Danny's script. That's the plan. Yeah, but did you hear that the U.S. has the most cases of COVID-19 in the world? So, I did. oh, Rambo. Okay, Rambo. Yes, thank you for joining us. Did you know that we have the most places of in the world? You're on the beach. You're on a beach. Cater, I heard that. I heard thank that. You. And you don't, you don't have to yell in. 
cool. So it looks like everyone is in. Um, can someone tell Danny that he is? Jesse, out with the chips. Stop, so close. To Jesse, eating chips spreads the virus like nothing else. So can you please stop? That's a good. Hey, can you grab me some chips? Yeah, you don't have to yell. I'm not yelling at you. Uh, wait, so what's, what's the plan for today? Okay, the plan for today is to stay inside, stay safe, and don't spread the virus, you know? Just stay safe. True, mm -hmm. but the, the plan is actually to get an update from Danny. Jesse! Jesse. Peanut butter crunch? It's the loudest of the crunches. Put it, put it down. Oh, why is he so mad? Oh, yeah, he's mad. No, Danny. He's not mad. Look how Dan, he's no, thrilled. Dan. He should really take a bath. Dan. Who, Danny? No, Jesse. Rambo. Jesse, he's please so stop eating. That's so close. Oh my you God, stop Rambo? yelling. So I didn't want him to do it. But he did it. Um, exactly. I, uh, everyone Dan. shut up. No, shut up. Cater, shut up. Everyone shut up. And wash their hands, please. Cater, shut up. Um, do you want me to shut up too? I want you to shut up. I'm not I have to I want you to shut up. Everyone shut up. Situation. Jan, we all know that you're not on a beach. Meredith, we definitely know you're not on a beach. Cater, who cares about the COVID-19 stuff? Madigan, who cares about the volume? Ian, you do need to stop yelling. Jesse, like seriously, yeah. stop crunching. And Danny, can you please get unmuted? Can someone message him to let him know how to get unmuted? I'll message him. I got it. Thank you. John, why, did, why, don't, you just, why don't you just do it yourself? Yeah. John, are you oh. okay? Why don't you just yell at everyone, John? Oh, wait. I think he's figuring it out. I am Send sorry. detailed instructions. Hey, can you guys hear me now? Hey! hey. There we go. Hey, there he is. That's a big guy. Too close. You're too, too close. close. Right here. Eh, hey, socially distance. Wink at us. Socially distance. That's fine. Uh, sorry about that, guys. I, uh, very sad. Very sad. Okay. Danny, can we get an update on the script? Yes. Yes. Very excited about this draft. Uh, got my old typewriter out. Hot off the presses. Got copies for. I'm leaving. Mm, no. Please, I can retype it up. So bye. I can retype it up and the formatting can look. I just give me like, like, like three to four hours, and I. No. <sighs> Guys. Oh. Hey, Danny. Okay. Bye, Jess. Oh. Okay. See you in a month. <laughs> Two. All right. Okay. Who's experienced some of these uh, madness? Uh, let's see. Yes, right? We've ex all experienced uh, some form or fashion of one of those. All right. If you're just joining us, you're in the right place. This is the Add Zing to Your Zoom webinar presented by the San Diego Press Club. I'm Luis Cruz with the San Diego Union Tribune and your moderator for tonight. Let's meet our panelists. Gail Lynn Falkenthal is owner and president of Falcon Valley Group, a strategic communication consulting firm based in San Diego. For two decades, Gail has leveraged online tools working from a home office with clients across the U.S., leaving her in an ideal position to teach others how to maximize those tools in the current pandemic reality. Gail is going to give us tips to help us graduate from Zoom rookie to polished presence online. Denise Scatina is a founding partner of Scatina Daniels Communications. She is an award-winning PR pro with more than 20 years of strategic media outreach and communications experience. In the last two months, the team at Scatina Daniels has radically shifted their approach to earn media implementation from pitching to producing working collaboratively and remotely with their clients to obtain video, images, and stories from the front lines as they deliver emergency services to San Diegans affected by COVID-19. Denise Gale, welcome to the both of you. 
Thank you so much, Louise, for stepping in as our moderator. You've been doing this a lot yourself. Hi. As well. <laughs> hey, Denise. And of course, you can see Terry down Hi. there. Hi, Terry. Wave to the crowd. Hello. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Welcome. <laughs> you know, we do nothing without our fearless executive director. Thank you, Terry. Right. Well, I was trying to figure out how to get myself off the screen, so I'll, I'll just <laughs> we're not, here we're not allowing guys. that. We're not uh, allowing feel, that. Feel free to, you know, hang out with us. Okay. <laughs> um, before we get started with uh, some valuable tips from Gail and Denise, we do want to sort of gauge the audience and um, want to, we want to know what you consider uh, your Zoom knowledge to be. Is it at the intermediate, is it at the beginner stage, intermediate stage? or pro level. So why don't you chime in in the Zoom chat feature and, and let's see where, you're, where you think you're at, beginner, intermediate, or pro? Ooh, there's a nearly pro level there. I'm not surprised to see Greg Lefebvre, formerly <laughs> of CNN, consider himself a pro. Okay. Good, we have a whole range of levels to read. Well, this is great. No matter what your level, this is for you. Even if you only take away one tip tonight, we hope you'll consider this a success and, right. and, uh, and we, for use of your time. And we do have one other question. Uh, what do you plan to use Zoom for? Is it work meetings, webinars, uh, streaming on social media platforms, interviews? Um, why don't you, uh, other? <laughs> All of the above. Okay, good, good answers. Oh my goodness, endless meetings. That was my day today. Oh, I... <laughs> <laughs> Work oh. meetings, mental health committees, a lot of meetings. Okay. And oh. webinars. And yeah. Meetings. Great. Right. We're going to have tips on all of that. So that's perfect. Yes, there is also a poll function in the webinar that you need to set up ahead of time, I believe. And, um, and so we didn't get a chance to do that, but that is actually a very nice feature. If you schedule a meeting, um, you can go back into the meeting before the meeting starts and actually type in your poll questions. And uh, it's really super cool. So that, that, that is another uh, cool feature, Bailey. All right. So, super. So I'm gonna have you, Luis, back it up once. Sure. And I've got a little question of my own to get us started on my section tonight to kick us off. Take a look at what you're seeing there. That's an actual Zoom meeting. The name of the organization is uh, Safely Anonymous to protect the guilty. <laughs> Take a look, especially at the kind of the three rows, you can see the full screens of everyone. Who there looks like they're a leader, has got their Zoom act together? Again, in the chat, you want to tell me what row they're in or what they're wearing, quick description, uh, eighth person from the left. If you see the names, let us know. Good, because you can see the names. Yes, 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 100%, A++++. It is the superstar, Amy Potts, who is in the lower full row, you can see, second from left. Look at the variation. And by the way, this is a group of, as you can tell, professional people in a professional meeting. And yet there is really only one person who looks polished, who looks authoritative. We're going to get you there by the end of this hour, I promise you. All right? What makes her look professional to you? You want to give me uh, your thoughts? What grabbed, what, obviously your eyes all went right to her. What was it about her presence? Clean background, absolutely. Camera at eye level, right on. Thank you, Greg would know. Background lighting, her posture. Oh, thank you for bringing that one up. Polished outfit, professional attire, absolutely right. We are going to talk about all of that. No ceiling. <laughs> Clean background, yeah, that does help a lot. Makes a big difference. So let's talk about that good lighting. All those things and more going into making her a complete Zoom pro, right? So I'm going to talk mainly about your visual presentation and setup with a little bit of technology thrown in. Let's get started. So 
first and foremost, number one thing that you need to correct in your Zoom is your lighting. Lighting, any photographer you've worked with will tell you lighting's number one. You've got to be lit well. And unfortunately, most of us are doing this at home where your home lighting is dim, mood lighting, little too warm most of the time, a little yellow, not the best. Or sometimes it's really cool blue, but mainly it, the complication is that lighting is just really dim. So you need to pump up your lighting. You can use natural light if you've got it available and that's possible. We are in San Diego and you have windows. So you might have some natural place and it might not be in your office that you have good natural light. If not, you need to add some artificial light. And at this time of night, most of you are going to need artificial light. And I use both. I am sitting in a west facing window, a basic series of bay windows that let a lot of light in during the day, but I still need fill light from the front and from the other side to make it evened out. You can test this yourself. Take your smartphone, flip it to selfie mode, and literally walk around your house and look at the lighting. And you might find a hidden corner or a spot where, wow, the lighting looks really good. If you can set up there and take advantage of it, that's your first best choice. If not, get yourself some decent lighting. There's a couple of ways you can do the artificial lighting on the fly that's easy for a Zoom meeting. Many of you have probably heard of ring lights. Ring lights can go around the uh, exterior of a webcam or you can set them up and adjacent to whatever device you're using to access your video conference. Usually the best thing is for that light to appear right behind wherever your camera is. And nothing fancy because you're not setting up a, you know, a main light and a fill light and a kicker. You're gonna have it coming right at you. So the best thing is to set it up usually a few inches behind your camera, which for most of us will probably be set on some kind of a stand up above uh, the camera. In my case, I'm using uh, a, an off the shelf type of light and believe it or not, it's one you can get at Costco for I think 40 bucks and it's called an OTT light, O-T-T, OTT. Light, OTT light, go on Costco.com, you know, do a search for that sucker and you'll find it. It throws a lot of wattage. It has three temperature settings and three level settings. So it's sitting behind my camera, flooding right at me, makes all the difference. That's a very easy fix. So we've taken care of what's in front of you. Now look at what, what is behind you, the background. Once you've got good lighting, you need to pay attention to what's going on behind you. How many of you are sort of tired of seeing bookshelves? And thankfully, the four of us, there's not a book among us. Uh, bookshelves work. Most people have bookshelves in their offices. You know, they're sort of inoffensive and they're fine, but you can often do a lot better than that. What you need to make sure is that once you are well lit, look, what's behind you? Is it tidy? Um, do, you, do you look good in contrast against that background? If not, what you might wanna do, if there's just nothing really appropriate, uh, is use a, a, a fill-in video photo background. Most of the video conferencing tools give you some standard backgrounds, office settings, um, chairs, coffee shop, they simulate fairly typical meeting spaces. And they work great if you've got good lighting, if you aren't being pixelated. Think back to our opening video, we had those two girls on the beach. Well, you know, nobody's sitting at the beach in a meeting and you shouldn't either. Your background needs to be professional, it needs to look crisp, and if not, you need to choose another one. One thing I highly recommend is to customize it. You can upload high resolution photos. You can go look for stock photos and use those to customize the background and choose something that looks appropriate to your business setting. Denise has got one, I've got one. Um, and you can test them out, see how they look, 
see if the angle looks natural, see if it looks in perspective to where you would sit. The furniture isn't too small or too big behind you. One of the other things you can do with a photography background with most uh, of these systems is blur the background, which is not a bad thing to do. Um, it takes the focus off anything going on behind you and puts the focus back on you. And you're the reason you're sitting in front of the camera, not your background. So sometimes it's a good idea to just go ahead and blur that background. Um, so electronically adding the photos is something you can consider. Uh, but test, test them. That's the key. Test it before you just launch it in the middle of a meeting and realize you're pixelating, you're fading out, or it doesn't look too believable. That, that's a problem. Um, let's talk about cameras. Most people um, use a laptop. Uh, some use a tablet. Some use a phone. The key to all of them is to make sure that it's set somewhere stable and that you have a good idea of where the camera is. In a laptop, it's usually at the top. You can add to any of those devices a webcam. Webcams are sort of uh, a hot ticket right now. You know, first we couldn't find toilet paper, and next we couldn't find hair color and flour and yeast. And right now it's really tough to buy a webcam because everybody's realized, yeah, I, I think I need to up my game a little bit with a webcam. But you can do perfectly fine with a good quality camera on a fairly recent laptop phone or tablet, but the positioning is crucial. Any of them can work, but number one, they've got to be stable. You shouldn't be holding it in your hands. You've seen people on phones and tablets who are holding them wiggling around. It's very distracting and you end up putting yourself into some really unflattering camera angles. Um, I just recommend that you do never ever go hands-free unless it's an emergency and you're running down the road and you've got to talk to somebody, that's about it. Now, once you've got the camera on, what most people want to do when they're in a Zoom meeting is look at everyone else. And frequently, they're filling the whole screen in a typical meeting. So you're looking at everyone down on the screen, but that's not where the camera is. The camera is, in my case, right there. So you need to discipline yourself to look into the camera. And it does take practice, but you need to think about making eye contact with your audience, especially if you're a presenter. And so practice, record yourself. Uh, nothing beats preparation and, and running through it. So remember to look at the camera. And position of the camera makes all the difference. It needs to be slightly above or at your eye level. It should never be below your eye level. Here's an interesting statistic, and this is true. Look it up, I promise you. It's real, not fake news. Plastic surgery offices are being deluged with phone calls from people who say, um, I need double chin surgery. No, they don't. They need to raise the camera <laughs> when they're doing Zoom meetings. If you look down, it's, or if, you look, if you're looking down on a camera, I promise you, it's about the most unflattering looking thing you can do. So put that camera up and look slightly up and you'll be in absolutely the right position. Let's go to the next slide. So then the next piece of magic is framing yourself. You've got the camera in the right place. You've got the lighting going. You look, you're ready to go. And now you need to make sure you're in the right place in the frame. And we're simulating face-to-face -face meetings. And you know what it's like when somebody's in a meeting with you and they, they're a little too far away and it feels weird, or they're crowding your space. You know, they're, they're not uh, respecting your, your personal space. You need to frame yourself properly so it looks like a natural conversation. You need to be in the center, right? You don't wanna be, unless you've got something you're holding up, you don't want to be way on, you know, way over here, way over here. The other thing that can happen is you're not, you're not giving yourself the proper little bit of headroom. You want to see some, just a little space above your head. And you don't want to cut off your head too much. And you also don't want to be way down here. You're going to look like a 12-year-old sitting on dad's lap. So 
center yourself, proper headroom. Think news anchor. News anchors, we're used to seeing that. It's an archetype, but that's the way it works. Luis, Luis, he could be anchoring your favorite network newscast right now. He's got the anchor look. It's a great way to mimic and get it right. It's a perfect prototype. Um, your appearance. Mo almost more than anything you wear, it's your posture. We've all seen people sort of, you know, slumped over, or they're leaning. I've just seen some of the worst posture on Zoom. It's just the awful thing. Raising your camera will help your posture. It'll help you stretch. You need to sit up straight. You need your shoulders back. It's going to give you a little energy anyway and help facilitate that eye contact. So posture, you know, make your dance teacher or whoever in your life nagged you to sit up straight, make them proud. What you can use also for your appearance, if you're a little concerned about, you know, not having gone to the hair salon or beautician lately, a lot of video conference systems have what's called a touch-up feature. You can go into the settings and it is literally a box that says something to the effect of touch up my appearance. Boom, give it a try. Barbara Walters would use it if she could. It's that good. And then your attire. Let's uh, end with that. Um, we're talking about the use of video conferencing for business purposes, meetings, presentations. This is not going away. Even when we go back to our offices, this is working so well, it's going to continue. And it's going to broaden our reach, broaden our ability to work remotely, not just in town, but all over the country. So we all need to keep working at these skills and, and get good at them. You're using it for business, you need to be dressed for business. You need to be dressed as if you were walking into a meeting. If you are pitching new business, if you're doing a job interview, if you're doing any kind of interview as a journalist, you need to be dressed for work. We could all laugh about sitting in our PJs and our sweats and wearing hoodies. When it's time to get to work, you need to dress for work. Uh, generally for Zoom, especially if you're lit well, dark colors work best, jewel tones work best, avoid pastels, avoid patterns, rich solid colors will make you stand out. I promise you, Denise, Luis, and I did not coordinate our outfits, but we know what works. <laughs> and we repeated it. Boom, boom, boom. I can't, hey, they're, they're the best endorsement in the world. Look at Denise, look at Luis. They're ready to go, and they'd be at home in absolutely any business-like setting. They're not way overdone. They're not way overdone. They're right on target. I don't recommend women by the way this is, this is a special to the women listening you know a lot of us like to wear sleeveless i do uh you see a lot of news anchors wear sleeveless i'm not so hot for that at zoom meetings and the reason is a lot of the real estate of your person is your shoulders in a zoom meeting and if your shoulders are uncovered people are seeing almost nothing but skin and in a business meeting not the best look it's perfectly all right if you're in person, but because someone can see you head to toe, but you're working with so much less here. So I advocate, even if you're not normally a real jacket wearer, toss on your, you know, classic black, navy, dark red type of jacket. And finally, um, avoid distracting jewelry. If you've ever appeared on TV, you've probably been told don't wear anything too big, too dangly, or too noisy. And the other reason is for Zoom, especially if you've got something big and metallic here and you've got a fake background, it's going to block the background. And some of that looks extremely freaky. So don't, don't go very, go very conservative, err on the side of being conservative. And I hope that helped you. I'm going to toss it back to our host and I know we'll all be happy to answer questions about this and everything in the next section once we get finished. All right, thank you very much, Gail. Those uh, were some great tips. So as I mentioned, I'm Luis Cruz. I'm with the San Diego Union Tribune. And I also started, um, since uh, we've been asked to work remotely, I've been, uh, I started a live stream on the San Diego Union Tribune Facebook page. 
uh, called San Diego's New Normal. But uh, this slide I wanted to show you because these are some simple hacks about how to get your, um, your camera to eye level. So I didn't actually have a, a camera. I had my laptop and a couple of empty containers, as you can see on the left-hand side, and a box. And I put them on top of a stool. And the picture on the right-hand side, that was actually a program that I taped with our, um, our owner, Dr. Patrick Sun Xiong, who owns uh, the San Diego Union Tribune and the LA Times. And this was, uh, he's, his companies are also trying to find a cure for COVID-19. So this was a one hour special on, uh, on his efforts. But uh, you can see nothing fancy on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, uh, you know, it's, it's pretty nice for TV. Uh, here's another picture uh, of sort of a before and after. This was for an Emmy special that we did. Again, I'm using my empty containers and my box. And uh, this was the picture before uh, I'm explaining to uh, my co-hosts uh, what the plan is. I, I, I was also producing the show. And then uh, the picture on the right-hand side is uh, what it looked like when we finally went on the air. So again, nothing fancy. Just, uh, just some empty boxes and uh, trying to make, uh, make sure that camera is at eye level. So those are some simple tips. Now, let's toss it over to Denise. Hi, everyone. Um, glad to be here tonight. Um, it's so exciting to see and know that you're all here with us this evening. So for people who up until mid-March worked in a typical office setting or classroom environment. And for those of us who have been who have been remote workers for a while, the COVID-19 shelter in place drastically altered the way we work and communicate. Our team at Skatina Daniels went to a remote agency operation in March of 2019, one year um, before our shelter in place order. But you know, old habits are hard to break we still held on to many of the in-office traditional habits as we established our new work, our new remote work from home environment. We didn't do video calls. We conducted in-person meetings with clients at their locations and coordinated in-person team meetings very regularly as we were used to being in the same room and having an instant sounding board. While this worked in the past, it just wasn't as time efficient as we hoped. The shelter in place order forced us to become a true remote agency. We had to not only adjust how we conduct our business, but also needed to support our clients as they accelerated their COVID response. And together, we adjusted how we fulfilled media interviews remotely and through social and physical distancing. Networking, professional development, and fundraising events media interviews and new business pitches that have typically been held in person are now virtual. Organizers are making their way through this, quickly adjusting the way they gather and cultivate connections to stay in touch, be informed, and raise awareness for social causes. But now we are moving out of the evacuate from our workplace phase and now settling into this new remote environment that will be prevalent for the foreseeable future. Personally, I believe we will not have a return to the typical work environments, events, and gatherings as we are accustomed to anytime soon, not until at least 2021. There may be many businesses and nonprofits that see the benefits of this environment, but nothing, nothing will replace that in-person experience. I predict there will be a need to mix, to be a mix of live in-person opportunities along virtual offerings. And communicators like us are at the forefront of guiding our clients, employers, and students through this change. Video conferencing services will be expected and should be a default tool in our, in our communicators toolbox. Even as stay at home orders are fully lifted, they are an opportunity for inclusion, especially to combat social isolation among men, many of us do experience. This is not a passing fad. As I like to remind our team and clients, the only constant in our lives is change. And, here, and you are here because you are experiencing change and I am excited that you've joined us as we navigate this together. So tonight I have been asked to provide tips on performance for video conferencing. These are tips that can be used across various professional situations. So here we go. 
You know, if you only remember one thing tonight, our advice is for you to not consider yourself at home. Consider yourself at work and your behavior will follow. Tip number one, upload a high res professional looking photo to your video conferencing account. So if you need to turn off your camera, we can still see you. Tip number two, place a meeting in progress sign on your door to, to discourage others from entering the room unexpectedly. If someone does enter the room, mute your microphone and turn off your camera and then step away to deal with the interruption. Secure the room before beginning again. And if there is a noise disruption, ask for a few moments until the noise subsides. Mute the microphone as needed. Tip number three, ensure your internet connection is reliable. Not every call needs to be a video call. If there isn't a visual component to your call, stick with audio only to preserve your bandwidth or schedule your video conferencing calls outside of peak hours. Security cameras and other Wi-Fi enabled devices can also use a lot of bandwidth and slow the speed to other devices that rely on Wi-Fi in the home. So turn them off when not in use or even pause your kid's connection to Wi-Fi when you need to take an important call, which is what my kids are doing right now. <laughs> Um, your internet may be slow if your Wi-Fi router is near a microwave or a mirror, so consider elevating that, that Wi-Fi modem on a shelf or on a tall piece of furniture because Wi-Fi signals travel outward and downward, and you'll, you'll probably see an improvement in your bandwidth um, speeds when you're doing your video calls. Tip number four, stabilize your device. I'm echoing what Gail has already talked about. Um, no handheld. Um, it's going to be very shaky. So you can use a desktop or a laptop, but if you're using a tablet or phone, consider stabilizing that with a tripod. And tip number five, check your audio. Your headphones or earbuds should be synced up to your device, either through Bluetooth or through a cord. You can perform audio and a video check before you sign into a call. And don't forget to know how to mute and unmute yourself. Um, unmute yourself only when you do speak. Being on mute shuts out sudden noises and routine sounds like sirens, typing, chewing, or even breathing. Performance matters. According to the National Social Anxiety Center, the fear of public speaking is the most common phobia ahead of death, spiders, or heights. The National Institute of Mental Health reports public speaking anxiety affects about 73% of the population. So what can you do to prepare for your virtual presentation? Well, hot tip is that many of the things that you would do, it's many of the things you do in the analog world. Prepare your speaking points, practice in advance, stand or sit in the same room you'll be presenting from to get focused. When presenting, also consider increasing the passion in your voice um, by at least 10%. It's also important to have natural pause points for your presentation and also bold certain words to remind you about emphasis. And just as always, it's important to speak to your audience. Content should be accessible across all proficiency levels. And if technology goes wrong, it probably will keep going don't apologize, pick yourself back up, acknowledge it, keep it moving right along. With more practice, those tech skills will come. There is a fine line between being prepared and coming across as authentic. So remember, you are the expert. You can build that trust. Be confident, but approachable. Last tip, little things can reveal a big nonverbal. Just as in any in-person public speaking opportunity, you are going to pay more attention to your physical presence and first impressions are important. But you may be less aware of social cues in a virtual meeting, your own and of your audience you are addressing. Gail has covered some of these posture, eye contact, clothing choices. But I wanna say use hand gestures and nod when appropriate so the meeting leader or the audience knows you're engaged and the screen is not frozen. Unless you're taking notes, you should not be multitasking when it is not your turn to speak. If you need to divert your attention, you can mute your mic and your camera. 
again, all of this plays into being perceived not only as a leader, but an engaged participant. Um, and in some Zoom calls, um, you can scan the screen to see how your audience is receiving the, your message. Based on their nonverbal behavior, you may need to pivot your presentation or performance. Turn on that charm. So as I wrap up my portion, I want to stress that the basic skills have become more important. Transitioning from analog to digital or virtual settings, the skills in prep are very similar, but you are all master communicators. Things are, are not going to be perfect, but it's important to realize all of us are continuously building upon our skill sets. So have some grace with others and yourself. Luis? All right. Thank you very much, Denise. Great stuff. All right, so it is uh, 6.42. We, again, you're watching the Add Zing to Your Zoom a webinar presented by the San Diego Press Club. All right, we do want to open it up for questions on the um, chat panel. So uh, that's a good question. We're being asked, did you rehearse tonight's webinar? Gail, Denise, why don't you go ahead and unmute yourselves and we'll just have a discussion yeah. here. We certainly did. We did multiple times. We, we have a actual run of schedule prepared by Denise. So we have a rundown. If you've worked in broadcasting, you know exactly what it looks like. We adjusted the time. We tested the technology. Uh, we passed back and forth uh, scripting notes to make sure that we weren't duplicating each other. Luis and Denise, I'll let you add from there. Yep. Um, yeah, the run a show is really key um, and it helps you stay organized and on track um, on one. We have one column that has minutes assigned and then on the second um, column are our are, are cliff notes. So preparation is key, right, Luis? <laughs> exactly. Yes. You'll feel a lot better if you run it, run it, uh, you know, go through it a couple of times. We have uh, another question here. Uh, where did you find the funny Zoom video, Gail? That is from Second City. Many of you know Second City is a comedy troupe, um, long standing history in Chicago, and it's on their YouTube channel. And there are quite a few more like that. Another funny one, if you want to watch it, is The Last Supper Imagined as a Zoom Meeting. Highly recommend it. <laughs> I'll have to Google that one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, let's see. How do you add a background to your view? I understand there are set stock backgrounds available on Zoom. Good question. So I can walk this, this by uh, all of you if you like. And there was another question about the touch up feature. Oh, that's a good one. Those of you on your Zoom, take a look at your screen. Bottom left, you'll see the video camera and an upward arrow or carrot. Click that. You should have a menu pop up, uh, gives you four choices. And the bottom one is video settings. Click that. You'll get a window, sub window open up with your video window in front of you. And underneath that, that's where you'll see three sections. The middle one is my video. And the bottom choice is touch up my appearance. Clicky, clicky, you are handled right there for that part. And then on the left of the same pop-up window, you'll see a menu. One of your choices is virtual background. So you're walking through it with me. You can click that and it will open a uh, library of choices below your main window. So it'll give you a few uh, generic ones. Um, I think I've got the Golden Gate Bridge and the Earth and kind of some crazy other stuff. However, you can upload photos to that virtual background mm -hmm. and you can go to a real black hole having fun with this. If you'd like to see a few of mine, I'll switch it around. MGM Grand Garden Arena, as you know, sometimes you need the spotlights, right? Um, let's see what else mm -hmm. I've, got. I've got my virtual room. I, if I'm bored with my other conference room, I have my alternative conference room, which is occasionally used. I've got my little office. I've got another office. You get the idea. There, there are quite a few. And when I'm feeling like really needling my colleagues who do not live in San Diego, <laughs> they always say, is that your, is that real? Is that your yard? And, Oh, it breaks my heart 
to actually tell them the truth. <laughs> so you can play around with that. It, it's a fun thing to do, but it will give you um, a much more professional screen for people to look at. And, and you sort of and I, look straighter and feel better. You're in a professional setting. Yeah, I um, got my background from Canva. So if any of you are familiar with that um, online web-based graphics tool, um, they have um, these virtual, these photos in, and you can use them as virtual backgrounds. And then I put in our logo, um, our Skatina Daniels logo on it to personalize it a little bit more. There are a couple of questions in the uh, Q&A uh, section here as well. Will you provide a list of equipment, webcam, ot light, and links to where you, <laughs> we can purchase them? So. Right. Yeah, uh, uh, I'm a big fan of B and H photo, B, A, B and H photo. I think it's bhphoto.com. It's out of New York um, mm -hmm. for technology. They're terrific. Nothing wrong with taking a look at Best Buy, although everything is sold out. Um, one place that seems to have some inventory for some of these things right now is Office Depot, believe it or not. Might give that a try. Um, and the lighting I use, like I said, was from Costco. Costco.com. Type in OTT, O T T light, boom, it'll should pop right up. I also put um, Canva is Canva is a wonderful resource for all things graphic. That is just Denise, a absolutely great reference yeah. for a million reasons. Um, if you're looking for stock photography without image rights, that's free. Uh, I get a lot of mine at either Pexels.com or Pixabay.com. Uh, they've got both paid and free versions. Make sure you don't use a paid choice that you should be paying image rights for and thinking it's free because you'll get nailed. Uh, but I put those links in the chat box. All right. Uh, can you talk about locking the room when invited people have signed in? Apparently that's been a problem for some. Anyone yeah. want to jump in on that? I'm happy to jump in on that. So there are privacy controls in Zoom. Uh, Zoom has had some issues, as you might have heard, with people uh, um, photo bombing or just showing up in chats because there's nothing to, to um, keep them out. But when you're setting up the meeting, it needs to be done at the time of setup. You can ask people to stay in a waiting room first before just popping in and then it allows the facilitator moderator the host to control who gets in and who doesn't and that, that's really the easiest way to do it along those lines do you recommend having a producer to help with questions and allowing attendees to join absolutely yes uh if you wouldn't if you i can't imagine producing any sort of professional broadcast without one. And I was a broadcast producer for many years. Uh, we would never in a million years have done a live talk show without a producer. Um, if it's a very high level meeting, I recommend that you at least assign or take turns with somebody being in control behind the scenes. And thankfully for Denise and I, we get to rely on Terry and Luis and Terry, do we want to talk about who's also sitting behind the scenes helping us? <laughs> Nicole Vargas is out there helping us yeah. too. Thank you so much, Nicole. Thank you, Nicole. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, Nicole. What is the <laughs> chat? <laughs> what is the, uh, the etiquette of dialing into a Zoom meeting as a phone call or attending and video? That's pretty a good question. I, I, I personally, I guess, uh, try to gauge the room and see if, uh, if, you know, if the majority of people have their cameras on, then I think it's uh, the polite thing to do to then join in with your video camera on. Uh, if it's a brief call and um, perhaps you're just going over some slides, um, I, you know, that may be considered more for uh, you can have your, your camera off at that point. I, right. And I think, I think that, you know, as you set up the meeting and you're sending out your reminders, you know, if it's an important um, meeting, you know, we work with um, the GI Film Festival and we just had our first advisory committee meeting. 
And the event organizer said, be prepared to turn your camera on. We want to see all of your faces. We want to, you know, it was a new, it's a new year. We're preparing for a new festival and we have new advisory committee members. So I think you can set that up in advance as an expectation um, when, you, um, when you send out your reminders. It's good to send out housekeeping tips um, and reminders in those invites as well. I deal with this a lot teaching college students. They are notoriously shy. They want to be off screen. Um, I'll allow it. I don't love it, but I, it is about setting up expectations. And it really does depend on your target audience and your level of comfort with it. Uh, Don asks, uh, Gail, what do you have behind you so the key works best? What do I have behind me? Oh, do you want to see what's really behind me, everybody? Let's what's that really curtain. behind the screen? Let's see. So I'm going into the uh, options that um, gives me my video. Let's see. Uh, I have to actually figure out how to turn the turn this off. Let's see. You'd hit the none for the virtual background. Right. Exactly. Here's virtual background, none. So there's where I really am, which I use as well. Um, I'm fortunate in that I've always liked really bright paint colors. So there isn't a single white wall or off-white wall in my entire house. Uh, the um, Chip and Joanna Barnes would probably be appalled. So <laughs> I have a pretty vibrant background behind me and it, it does really well. And I've used this uh, actually for a real background plenty of times. And if I take the print off the wall, um, you know, it's even more of a flat background. I don't recommend sitting in front of a completely blank background, like a painted wall that's just one color. For one thing, you know, makes you look like it's a mug shot or, you know, something not that appealing. It gives a little bit of perspective, so it's good to have something. And in my case, I also have a seam here where I've changed from cobalt blue to honey gold or whatever the heck the color is. <laughs> and I've got a little bit of a shutter here, so there's enough, uh, enough there. And you're seeing a lot of people have gone, you started with the bookcases, and they've kind of decided, okay, I'm sort of over everybody using the bookcases. And now you're seeing a lot of like, sort of credenzas with things sat on them or a plant right now. It's interesting to see the progression of people, you know, sort of improving their Zoom background. So Luis has gone, he's at that next level. You see the plant, <laughs> the plant there behind his shoulder. And he has put some depth on the wall with the sign there, which I absolutely love. Oh, and Luis gets to make yeah. a little bit of a statement there as well. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, let's see. We Boy, we have a lot of comments and questions. So let's try it. Right. We only have about five minutes. So let's see what we can get through. Is it best to decide who facilitates tech versus moderating? Yes. Yeah. Uh, you know, this is a very <laughs> difficult thing to navigate. You know, we, we all acted like, oh, we've got this. We're really good at this. There's a lot of balls in the air and there's a lot to do. And if the stakes are high, ask for help. You know, if it's a really high level meeting, big presentation, uh, job interview, uh, and you have multimedia to work with or a lot of moving parts coming in, I, I would say, you know, divide and conquer. I really would. And I think that you can practice you know, you know, dial up a friend if you're doing a job interview or a new business pitch, you know, get together with your team in advance and or, or a good friend and do a Zoom call to to get that practice going. Um, or you can do it during a virtual, you can work on some of these lighting and some framing tips when you're doing virtual happy hours or or doing some personal calls with friends. So I think the more we practice, um, the more we're going to all be Zoom experts, so. Uh, let's see, a couple more questions here. Do you recommend keeping virtual meeting times shorter than ones that are held in person? I do. I do, I do. I do. yeah. Um, a lot of people are using the free version of Zoom, which limits you to 40 minutes, and I don't think that's such a bad idea. You know, most meetings 
I'm sure most of you agree, most meetings go on way too long. They don't start on time, which drives me crazy. And you can easily get your work done. If you've had to do a lot of these meetings in a day, uh, I think we were all discussing during our rehearsal time earlier today, you know, we have done a lot of meetings today and you can really, you think to yourself, why am I so wiped out? Well, it, it's a bit of a performance. You know, there's yeah. a lot you've got to pay attention to. You're, you're burning a lot more energy doing this than sitting in a meeting, you know, at the very far end of the conference table or you imagining that nobody's really looking at you. It's a very different experience. You know, they call that Zoom fatigue. Yeah. So it's a it, real thing. It's a it real thing. And, real. and, and we've, we've, uh, um, we have some tips on that. You know, you should space out your video comp, space out your, your video meetings to ensure they're not back to back. I'm guilty of running them back to back. Cause I just, you know, try to cram them all in. Um, one of the, the tips from one of my team members said, you know, give yourself a two hour block, at least during the day to work outside the meetings, you know, so schedule time for you. And I think that that, that can really be helpful. So. All right. I have invented the zoom teeny. Someone says shaken. That's <laughs> her. <laughs> I'm going to use that. <laughs> I want to come to that meeting. <laughs> yes. I want to use that. All right. <laughs> I, I do recommend, you know, you might decide that, it, you know, at the work site in person, it's okay for you to bring a drink or a snack. Try to avoid that during a Zoom call. Uh, it's not a bad idea to have, you know, a little beverage or glass of water in case you, yeah. you know, get a frog in the throat or you need to cough or something like that. But um, you don't want to spill that thing on your keyboard or your device. That would be a disaster. Although I think, yeah. uh, you know, after five o'clock, if you're with friends. <laughs> right. I, I'm speaking strictly. Yeah. Not, a work, not a work meeting, but I'm just saying if you're, just gonna, if you're going to unwind and get together with friends on a, on a Zoom call, uh, you know, I think that's allowed. Uh, All right. It, yeah. it is, uh, I believe, 6.58. Uh, so uh, last words, uh, Gail and Denise, uh, any closing remarks? You know, practice is the key. Try, test, uh, practice some of these things in a low stress environment on those happy hours and family calls. Uh, you know, see if you can try a few of these techniques, play around with the backgrounds. Uh, I do a podcast that's very lighthearted. Uh, some of you know I have a side as a sports writer. We've tried a lot of crazy things and um, it's a good place to practice your technique uh, when you're not on the clock. If anyone wants any other tips or wants to do a little tutorial with me or a chat, I'll offer myself and my time up to anybody that's here on the call and I will type my uh, uh, email address and my phone number here and I sincerely mean it. If you give me a call, I'll help you out. And I think I think I I think I'd like to add that again, you know, this is not a passing fad, you know, when we're when we all get the green light to go back to the office, you know, the the office environment, the classroom environment, you know, there's a lot of us that, you know, for various reasons we can't go back or we don't want to. We figure out this is working well for us. What why do we need an office for? So really, you know, when we're, you're working with your clients or you're working with your audience or your other employees, you know, really have that virtual option in your toolbox and, and have it ready, you know, to offer that alongside anything that's in person, um, you know, especially at least for the next year or so. It, again, it, it, it's really going to be more of an inclus inclusion tool. Um, we got the list of, of um people who have registered for this event tonight and last week. And it was really great because we are seeing you as guests that, you know, you may not have been able to come to an event, you know, for the press club. So it's really exciting to see um, new faces, old friends being able to participate in ways that they might not have been able to before. So keep that in mind when you're providing um, recommendations uh, for communications and, and, and events in the future. And let me add one thing, 
this is going to make you so much more valuable to the workplace, to a potential employer, because you can manage these skills, you can work remotely, and it's going to broaden your ability to work outside the immediate area. People are finally now getting comfortable with this because they've been forced to get comfortable. But what that means is you can work in San Diego, and in my case, I have clients in Florida, Michigan, Maryland and New Jersey. And that's part of my income I would not have had without the ability to use tools like this. It makes you more valuable and more employable. And boy, is that more important than ever to all of us. <laughs> well said. Well, before I say goodbye, I do have two quick announcements I'd like to make. If you're a college student or a nurse, or you know a nurse, or you know a college student, uh, the San Diego Union Tribune is giving away free uh, digital subscriptions. Uh, so shoot me an email. I'll put my, my email, but it's just Luis at sduniontribune.com. So um, feel free to send them my information so they can sign up for those, take advantage of those complimentary digital subscriptions. And also, if you know of any organizations or people making a difference in our community, feel free to send them my way as well so I can highlight them on our uh, daily live stream that uh, streams live every day, Monday through Friday on our UT Facebook page. So uh, let me, and again, Great. so in case, uh, you, there it is, L. Luis at S. Could, could I say, could I say one thing? Sure. Um, remind you to renew your memberships. Um, the, tele, the con, sorry, the Excellence in Journalism Awards contest opens on July the 1st. We do not know yet whether we will be able to have an in-person in awards in October, but we will certainly do something San Diego Press Club style. So we'll see you then. Um, um, in the meantime, we're just here for you. Thanks. All right, Terry, as always, thank you for keeping us on track. Gail Lynn Falkenthal, Denise Scatina, it's been a pleasure uh, sharing this uh, time with you, so thank you. And thank you all for watching this uh, event from the San Diego Press Club. We appreciate it. And we hope uh, you got some valuable tips out of it. Thank you again for watching. Have a great night, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.